What's up, fight fans? Man, man, me, man here. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. What up to the fam? And what up to everyone in main man, me, man's boxing form? Hey, look, man. So the thing is this. I want to give a hearty congratulations to Oshaki Foster for getting the split decision victory over Robson Conceição and winning the WBC 130 pound championship back. Uh, he got it. He got his rematch, man, and uh, he rose to the occasion, and he got the victory. Fight fans, this time, I guess by a much better margin than the first time around, where a lot of folks thought that he could have, should have got the nod in that fight. Uh, but this time, coming back and making it a bit more cleaner, man. So, um, I still thought this was a razor thin close fight, though. At least on my judge, on my on my scorecard, it was. Uh, or uh, the three judges uh, giving it one thirteen to one fifteen two times. For Shaki Foster and also 115 to 113 to Robeson Casesau. I told y'all fight fans to mess with that split decision. Uh, so it looks as if that this fight came exactly down to the call that I thought it was was going to come off as a split decision victory for Oshaki Foster. But uh, this time around, once again, I guess to the in the judges' minds, uh, he made it a bit more cleaner and cleaner enough to get the nod. Oshaki Foster led in the punching department. Of course, we're going to be paying attention to the CompuBox box numbers, uh, which was they were showing all throughout of the broadcast. And uh, Oshaki Foster was the more accurate puncher this time around, just like he was in the first fight. And um, this time, just turned it up just a bit more. Uh, he actually hurt Robeson Casesau in round ten uh, with a good right hand, and uh, while they were having an exchange, and uh, put him on shaky legs. However, man, uh, Foster couldn't r rise to the occasion enough to go after him and kind of finish off Kinsaisal. Uh Early on, man, it was kind of cosmetically similar to the first fight. I gave the first round to um, Oshaki Foster. However, in the next couple rounds, I gave him to Robes and Kinsaisal. I thought he was coming forward, landing the better shots, uh, the cleaner, harder shots. And uh, I thought that their portion of the fight, he was actually taking off early pretty well. However, roughly about round four and five, I thought Oshaki kind of got back into the game and uh, started picking off shots very well off the back foot. And uh, at times when he was stepping in to come forward, doing some good some good work to the body uh, and landing some good shots on the inside. Um, as the fight progressed on, it became more of a back and forth fight, but more so in favor of Robeson and Kinsaisau. Uh Kinsaisau was kind of doing much better in the middle rounds uh, because he started to give different looks. Uh, instead of just coming forward, swinging a bunch of punches as he was doing early on in the fight, he started to kind of go to the back foot and bounce around a bit, use more of his boxing ability. Um, he did pretty well, actually, you know what I'm saying? Much better than I, I think I would have expected him to do. But we got to understand, because Sal is a crafty veteran, been around the game for quite some time. And uh, this could have helped him kind of prolong himself in the fight and try to give a different look. Um, he was having some successes during this time, too. Um, just forced Oshaki Foster to start having to come forward. And as Oshaki Foster was coming forward, he wasn't landing no shots with a lot of pepper on him. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was doing a lot of defensive slipping, but however, wasn't making like Kinsaisal pay after slipping. You know what I mean? And it just his come forward game was just it wasn't strong, but it was enough to kind of he was doing enough defensively. Uh, to stay out of the way of too hard of, of shots, keeping his hands up very well, catching a lot of shots on the gloves, uh, using good hand, head movement. But once again, not not doing a lot of too much too much of the breakdown. He he, I think in his mind he thought he was really breaking down Casesau. Uh, but from the viewer standpoint, it just didn't seem like much as he was coming forward. So Casesau was doing well as he was kind of moving to the back foot, and moving laterally. But the thing is, is that I think more of this activity started to wear Kinsaisau down, started to tire him out a little bit. And as that happened, uh, this allowed Oshaki Foster to start to have a bit more success. Kinsaisau started to get a bit tired. You know, all of the punching he did early on, uh, then switching to more of a moving style, I think that kind of depleted him a little bit more. And this uh, allowed Oshaki Foster to start landing better shots on the inside uh, and eventually landing that right hand in roughly what, in round 10. Uh, this is the best punch of the round for Oshaki Foster in round 10, uh, landing that right hand hurting Kinsaisau. Uh, and then from 10, 11, and 12, it could be argued that, that Oshaki Foster finished this fight much stronger than Kinsaisau, mainly because Kinsaisau once again got tired and he also had to recover from that good right hand in round 10. 
And so these the next few rounds, you got Oshaki Foster more so coming forward. And uh, you know, optic wise or cosmetically, uh at this portion it looked more so like Oshaki Foster was more in control of the fight. Though Kinsei was still at this point bouncing around more so uh around the outside and trying to lure uh Oshaki Foster into some big shots, into some big one twos. Um, however, it still looked like at this point point that Oshaki Foster was more in control of the fight though. Because once again, um, Kinsei was getting tired and he had to take a lot of portions to recover. So the last three rounds I gave to Oshaki Foster. Uh, this was uh, strong enough for him to pull it out on my scorecard by one round. Um, I, I thought it was a really, really close fight, man. And uh, you know, I, I, I had it. Uh, I had it. Uh, one fourteen to one thirteen in uh, in favor of Oshaki Foster. Uh, but once again, a really close fight. And uh, Robson and Casesau has no reason to kind of let his head down. Uh, he now has his third loss, and all three of his losses came in world title fights. And, uh, you know, he's always been known as a guy that had a lot of heart. Um, a guy that's just, it's just, it's, it's a crafty veteran, been around the game for a long time, going to be definitely hard for anyone to defeat. And uh, people are also wondering now that, you know, these two, are, on paper at least, have split one and one. Should they go back for a rematch or a trilogy? And I think honestly, I mean, these two fighters, it's, it's not the most action pack uh, type fight, but I think it's an interesting chess match. These two styles complement each other from a chess match point of view. So, I mean, I'll be down to see it one more time, you know, to see these two uh, kind of break the tie and uh, make it, you know, definitive, definitive who kind of settles this score, especially since both fights were kind of close. So I think I'd be with it. After the fight, though, Oshaki Foster called for the winner of uh, Emmanuel Neverate and Oscar Valdez, who have a fight coming up, and uh, he wants the winner of that fight, and that'd be a good unification fight. However, Kinsei would like to run it back with Oshaki Foster. We'll see which way uh, both men turn, fight fans, and see how this all kind of plays out. But all in all, good fight, a uh, good victory for Oshaki Foster. Good to see him go back to get his title back. And uh, you know, what I'm saying this is what the fight game is made out of, man. Uh, people losing their titles, regaining it back. This has to be a very, very big moment for Shaki Foster. Real spill. Thumbs up on the way out. If you didn't hit it on the way in, share, 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 rock the bells. Now, I think that the place that Kasey Sal just kind of messed up at is that, I mean, I think it was smart to kind of give the adjustment and started to move around a little bit more. It wasn't nothing wrong with that, but I thought he should have stopped it for after a while. After about two or three rounds of it, he should have stopped. He started it roughly about round seven or eight, and he finished the entire fight in that fashion. I think he should have kind of returned back to his normal uh, way of fighting roughly about round 10 and maybe finished the championship rounds in that fashion instead of doing too much boxing. That may have cost him in the stamina department. And um, as for uh, as Oshaki Foster, I mean, I can't say he did anything too much wrong other than the fact of a lot of, a lot of good defensive uh, work but just not enough making pay. And, you know, that's just kind of been Oshaki's thing. He's always been kind of a fighter that's satisfied with just touching you. You know what I'm saying? So, and this is why his name is as big as it could be. As big as it could be. So, you know, Oshaki Fawcett just, you know, he's a, he's a good fighter though, man. He's a world champion. And uh, he, he's, he's a guy with a lot of heart himself. And uh, we're going to see how he kind of pans out at 130 and if he can get the winner of Neverate and uh, Valdez. So we'll see how it all works out. Thumbs up on the way out. If you didn't hit it on the way in, share, share, share. Rock those bells. To the next video, man. Peace out.